Susan Arnott is a mum of two grown-up girls, and she was looking forward to a well-earned rest when her family left home and had children of their own. But a visit to a craft fair was to change all that. She came home with the smell from that fair firmly etched in her head, and she sat down to plan a brand new business, one which she could run from her home. Well, her kitchen to be exact. So, she did her research and assembled all of her ingredients. But when Susan starts cooking, don't expect a batch of freshly made scones. Well, initially it was a visit to a, a big craft event at Ingolston about six years ago. Um, I went with a friend and my husband and it was just, we went round and had a look at all the different craft things and I found a lot of it really interesting. Um, but the soaps were the one thing that attracted me the most. I think it was just the, the different smells and you always wanted to go back and have another sniff at something else, you know, throughout the day. You always, was, I was always drawn back to that. So that's uh, sort of what made me decide to start the business. And also, I think smells play an important part in your life as through childhood and adulthood. There's always certain smells you remember throughout your life and it always sort of brings back good memories, I think certain smells and a few of my soaps have done that to some people over the past few years anyway. Well the first thing I had to do obviously was a lot of research um, how to actually make soap, you know, looked at lots of different ways um, and I decided to use the cold process method um, just because it's an old fashioned method and I wanted to try and keep an old tradition going. It was helpful to start with because it kind of gives you a basis of what you what business ideas you've got. It also gives you some sort of ethos that your business is working to, uh, which was sort of in connection with the natural soaps that I make. That was what I was planning on doing. I didn't want to have to add anything artificial to the soaps. I wanted to keep it all natural. So that, and from that respect, yeah, the business plan did help. Initially I went to Business Gateway just to see what they thought about the idea and we'd, we'd already got the business plan in place and we had lots of other things that we'd research so it was much a case of just getting a, a backup saying yes we think it's a good idea which they did um, and then that moved us forward um, with the business. Um, we didn't get any help with like startup grants or anything because of our age um, which was unfortunate, but it didn't stop stop me thinking about, you know, the business, and I still wanted to go ahead with it. Um, and initially, the the cost of actually starting up wasn't as much as I'd thought it was going to be anyway, because a lot of the things are just basic. Your equipment's just basic kitchen equipment that you use anyway. It's not there's nothing, you know, high tech or anything like that that you need to buy. So um, the costs were quite low for starting up, which was fortunate. Well, most of my clients come from, you know, customers that I get at craft events. I also have a few trade customers as well. Um, and initially, sometimes it's word of mouth as well. People hear about me from other people and then they decide that they want to buy from me. I started using Facebook and Twitter a while ago, but I'm afraid I'm not a great, great fan at the moment. I'm just, I find it quite difficult to find the time to do it. Um, and when I do find time to do it, I find that I'm on, I'm on it for longer than I'd hoped. Um, so I feel sometimes it, it wastes your time a little bit, but I can see from a business perspective it could be quite useful. The plan is to, I'm hoping to open up a shop with a few other of my craft, crafty friends. We've got five or six people interested in doing this, and this is to... to sort of move all our businesses forward but to also help to keep the costs down for us you know travelling to craft fairs it'll sort of reduce the amount that we need to actually travel to um, and the plan is to to do craft workshops have guest exhibitors and maybe art exhibitions and just different different things that would be of interest to the community where we set up the shop the best advice I could give is do your research um, that's the biggest, 
you know, let down of a lot of small businesses that they don't do enough research. Um, basically be positive, um, join a group of some sort that's related to your your business if you can because it definitely helps to have the support from, from people that are doing the same sort of thing as you or even people that are not doing the same sort of thing as you can be quite useful as well because you could have like ideas that, that would cross over, you know, even though you're doing different, you're part of different businesses. Um, advice, any other advice, get a, get help from, you know, Business Gateway or places like that that they'll be able to help you sort of get on the the stepping stone towards starting your own business. I would say both. Um, I certainly don't make huge amounts of money at the moment, but I do love what I do. Um, it's, <laughs> um, I find it, I don't know, it's boosted my confidence. A lot of things that I do now I would never ever thought I would have done, um, and definitely I would recommend it you know, to anybody. As Susan's business success story shows, you don't have to employ dozens of people to be an entrepreneur. Susan's cottage industry takes her all over Scotland and allows her the freedom to mix her business with seeing her children and her grandchildren. And who knows, one of them may think that a sustainable soap business is worth getting their hands dirty for.